60 Cycle Hum features a mix of products that were purchased or provided and content that is a mix of sponsored, paid, unpaid, and Patreon funded. Use your eyes, ears, and common sense to come to your own conclusions. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. You're watching 60 Cycle Hum. And in this video, I'm going to be unboxing and giving my first impressions of the Positive Grid Spark Amplifier. I've done it! I've made it, Mom! I'm a big time guitar YouTuber. I've got a Spark Amp now. <laughs> These things were pushed so hard like a year and a half ago or something like that when they were doing the crowdfunding campaign uh, to get them into production. They sent out a bunch of these to so many different guitar YouTubers, so many. It seemed like you couldn't get away from Spark videos for a while. Um, so when they hit me up, they, they actually hit me up inquiring about sponsoring the podcast. Um, I felt kind of weird and anxious about it. I'm like, man, these things got pushed so hard to the point where it's something that like viewers reference as like a time when, you know, guitar YouTube marketing has gone too far. Um, and honestly, as a consumer myself, I feel that way too. Like it was a lot. I like being part of big product launches. Like I love being part of like the, the big product launches that like Walrus does and Fender does and stuff like that is fun. But on the other side of it, when I wasn't participating, like, I get it. I get it. It's a lot. It's a lot of content and a lot of like, you know, gape mouth, like overly positive sorts of vibes from thumbnails coming up on YouTube. Like, oh, spark. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> so when they hit me up about doing the podcast sponsorship, I was like, I can't promote this thing. I can't host a sponsorship um, without actually getting to try one of these amplifiers. Um, so they agreed, <laughs> they sent me the amp, and now I'm gonna check out for myself, is the hype real? How does this thing actually sound? Uh, my concern, without ever having tried one before, is that I I think the software side of it is gonna sound fine. I actually have um, their app on my phone that I bought they didn't uh, give that to me. I bought it for a different uh, product demo like a year or so back. Bias Effects 2 is what it is. And I thought it was good. For like a, uh, a smartphone app, you can plug a product in and play guitar through it. I thought it was fun. There's a lot to work with there. Um, so I think that side of it is gonna be fine. The thing I'm concerned about is what will this actually sound like in room? Is it gonna sound like a guitar amp or is it gonna sound like a Bluetooth speaker with guitar software running through it? Um, I, know that, I know that there's a lot of extra deep dive features in here uh, where you can do this thing where you play some chords and then it generates a backing track for you. I'm gonna to try to get to that. I know it also does um, like chord reading off of recordings. Like you can run a YouTube song through it and it'll show you the chords and you know, kind of break it down for you so you can play along. I'm interested to try those out, but I'm more interested in checking out the overall sound of it. I wanna check out some of the patches. I wanna see how it feels in room. I'm gonna throw a mic on it. That's really where my concerns lie. All right, here we go. Always makes me nervous doing unboxings because I can't go back. Once it's opened, it's open. So anything that I said, I can't go back and correct and expound upon, you know? I have to be in the moment. One thing I've been curious about is how it's powered. This little nine volt style plug. Obviously it doesn't take nine volt. It takes 19 volt, two and a half amps. Wow. It is power hungry. It's got a USB back there, an aux input, a light for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, I'm assuming. As a physical object, as a product, it's attractive. It looks like a serious piece of music equipment. It doesn't look like a cheap toy. It's got Tolex on it. It feels sturdy. It's got a weight to it. It feels like an amp head. Waiting for the trash truck to be done outside. The joys of recording in a garage. Some people might be saying, 
Well, of course he's going to say it's good. He's got a podcast sponsorship on the line. It's not even about me figuring out if it's good or not. It's about figuring out its actual qualities. Like if I'm going to promote it on the podcast, I want to be able to say what its strengths and weaknesses are. The vast majority of guitar products, they're subjective. It's subjective whether they're good or not. It's subjective whether or not they fill an individual's needs or not. So I want to be able to present all the products that I help promote in the most honest light that I can. I don't gain anything by tricking the audience into buying things that they don't need or want. Like, I want you to have an experience that's similar to my own experience when I'm trying something and know what that experience is for the sake of, you know, you guys being able to shop accurately. All right, it powers on, I'm gonna set up a microphone. From what I can tell, there are two like three and a half inch speakers on the front grill here. So I'll cover one of them up with uh, my Cascade Fathead ribbon mic there to pick this thing up. No idea if it'll do any stereo effects or anything like that. I could record out of the headphone out, but then I'd have to have a whole rig for me to monitor it. The moment we've been waiting for, first impressions. See what this thing sounds like. I'm gonna run through the presets here across this knob, and then I'll dive into the app, which I still have to download and set up, I'm sure. Wow, it sounds really like low and heavy. Well, I might as well start off using the tuner. It says hold for tuner. I'm on the acoustic setting right now. Next up is a bass setting. I'm not gonna use that. We'll start with clean. Reset the knobs every time you switch to a new thing. Yeah, it's like switching through presets. I'm gonna have to explore it when I get into the app to see if I can dial in a, a drippy surfy reverb, right? tell this thing's got a ton of volume on it. The output volume is at like a fourth of the way through right now <laughs> and it's plenty loud enough. Yeah I think that's about the volume that I run my Princeton's at when I'm recording. I mean it's sitting right next to me which means it's probably quieter but yeah it's it's got plenty of output.
I wouldn't say it gets as loud as my Princeton's, um, but it gets plenty loud enough. That was uncomfortable for me right now with it all the way up. It was also starting to do a little bit of a crispy breakup thing uh, in not a good way <laughs> with it all the way up. But I don't think anyone buys one of these to crank it and use it as a stage amp. If you're doing that, I think you've bought this amp for the wrong reasons right off the bat. <coughs> It does sound good. It doesn't sound bad. It doesn't sound small or thin or nasal in a way that you wouldn't want it to. Um, I would say that my early impression is that it does sound like, there's like a difference between like hearing a raw guitar amp and hearing a guitar amp that is recorded mastered and then put in a track. I find that a lot of times like digital sorts of emulations of guitar amps and stuff like that end up sounding like a recorded guitar. And I think you're getting that with this. It sounds like a recorded guitar where the studio mastering and everything has been done and studio EQ and whatnot. It doesn't sound like a guitar amp sitting in the room with you, which is fine. It's totally fine. It still sounds good, but yeah, I wouldn't expect to get a raw amp experience out of this. Maybe it'll surprise me later on, we'll see. This is the glassy setting. I'm assuming like a Vox sort of thing. I haven't even checked the quick start guide. I don't think it's gonna give me any of that information, which is fine. I can use my ears and figure it out. Yeah, that sounds like a voxy, sort of chimey sort of sound. Let's pull back the reverb quite a bit. On to the crunch setting. The stock setting of the crunch it did not sound good to me. It was beyond like the uh, the lows being too much. It just started to like feel like kind of flubby. I'm still not totally sure I'm into that. Yeah, that setting sounds bad to me. What do you guys think? All right, there's a high gain setting and a metal setting. Here's the high gain setting. Man, you really gotta pull back the lows on every single setting so far. It's got so much low end going on. Thank you. 
I put on a little bit of that modulation, it got really filtered sounding, which is what modulation is supposed to do. I, I'm interested to see how it's set up when I get into the app, like what effects are being stacked here. Um, with the high gain setting, I am getting that Bluetooth speaker kind of vibe from this. It's, uh, I'm not getting a, an amp in room sort of vibe from it. <laughs> the metal setting. throw humbuckers at this. It sounds so murky. So far, the high gain setting, the glassy and the clean sound decent to me. The crunch and the metal, I can't, I can't get into those. They're so murky and uh, just very small speaker sounding. To figure out the app. I gotta figure out what's going on here. All right, we are downloading. Even with the bass all the way down, the low end from this. This big booming ringing sound that's filling the whole room from that low end. shaking the grill cloth. I've got the bass all the way down. I can feel it vibrating the hairs on my arms. It's so bassy. What happens when I turn the bass all the way up? It didn't like that. It made a crispy sound with the bass all the way up. So unfortunately, I don't think I can have the control panel on the amp being caught by the camera at the same time as the app, but I have a feeling 
all the most important action here is going to be happening on the app right now. All right, so what do we have here on the clean setting? A black-faced duo. Let's turn off the compressor, jeez. Turn off the modulation, turn off the delay. Sounds way better without the compressor on. Jeez, man, it was compressing it so much. I'm hoping this thing can redeem itself in the app because the sounds I was getting off the face of it, I'm not stoked about. It's doing a good job of being loud. But I don't know, so far, so far I'm not impressed with the, uh, the sounds across this knob. It sounds better on the clean setting now that the compressor's gone. We'll see, we'll see if I can, uh, if I can find some sounds that I'm excited about. Let's cut to the chase. I want to see if I can make the reverb drip. This is the classic plate. How do I get to a different reverb? Here we go. Double tap. So we've got room studio, chamber, hall natural, plate short, hall ambient, plate rich, hall medium, plate long, Room studio and then nothing, <laughs> there's not a spring reverb. How is that possible? That's honestly a little bit surprising that there's not a spring reverb even attempted here. There also wasn't any sort of like shim reverbs or ambient reverbs or anything experimental like that. A bunch of halls and plates. Do I need to update it? No, I just downloaded this software. It should be fine, right? It should be up to date. All right. Let's see if I can experiment with some amps. There's like a JCM 120 sort of thing. Orange amp. Matchless. AC boost. We'll check that out. You really do have to pull back the low end on pretty much every single amp you pull up. Now hold on. 
It says I'm on channel 4 metal. I want to know if it gives me access to other reverbs. No. So it's not like a genre thing. <laughs> I'm not going to go through every single amp right now. All right, we'll go through the plexi. reverb. I'm going to go coil cut on this for some single coil sounds. All right, let's see if I can get a surfy sound out of this. It doesn't sound good to me. The compressor is off right now, but it sounds very compressed still. I'm interested in American high gain. Acoustic, huh? Fish boy, probably a fishman amp sort of thing. Uh, these are all acoustic settings. What is an RB800? Probably bass amps, right? I'm feeling these are all bass amps. Maybe this thing has so much low end because you can use it with bass as well. But that low end is just taking over the guitar signal. All right, let, let's find an amp I can build stuff around. Might as well stick with the, uh, with the black duo. A booster. Oh man, here we go. Fuzz. What fuzz will I go with? Guitar muff? Fuzz face. Let's do a fuzz face.
do you guys think so far? take a break for a couple minutes stand in front of the air conditioner think about what I'm experiencing here take a dive into some of those other functions um, the kind of like song looping thing the uh, you know chord detection when you play songs through it and stuff like that and then I'll wrap up with some final thoughts on the spark all right I'm back. I had to take a break, stand in front of the air conditioner, change my shirt because I am sweating to death in this garage. Oh my gosh. That's the physical sacrifice I'm willing to make for you guys today. <laughs> I also spent some time messing around with some other settings in here, uh, notably the muff fuzz setting in here, the guitar muff. I also changed the amp. <laughs> Right? I, I'm starting to get the impression that you've really got to spend some real time dialing in each amp with each pedal that you're going to use. You can't just trust the presets and go for it. There's certain combinations that just sound bad. They just sound bad, but then every now and then I'm running into things that sound decent. So far, my impression is that this is very good at sounding loud. <laughs> But generally, it definitely has that computer speaker, Bluetooth speaker sort of feel going on. It does. It hasn't once felt like an amp in the room with me. Um, but it's got a lot of features going on. I've still got a lot to check out. <laughs> Hopefully, I can uh, show off as much as possible before just throwing in a towel on this video because there is a lot to cover. But anyways. <laughs> This orange style clean amp here it sounds like a muff to me but when I was running it earlier through this fender style clean amp that doesn't sound the way a muff sounds through my fender amps so I'm not totally sure what's going on there um, it doesn't sound great to me it sounds way better on that orange style amp That's what I'm talking about. You've got to spend the time, if you have one of these, dialing in your sounds, making your own presets. Uh, speaking of presets, let's check out the, uh, the cloud-based presets here. I was scrolling through them earlier. Let's go back up to the top. Uh, I had to sign in with my Apple account to have access to them. Bend the Fend. 
Not sure what that means. Someone's attempt at a clean style Fender sound. Metallica, of course. Eddie Van Halen. Let's see what we got here. Lots of low end on that. Yeah, if you don't have these patches set up just right, they tend to sound really low heavy, really low mid heavy, kind of murky, kind of distant, you know? I'm wondering what that sounds like in post. In room, like I said a couple times now, I'm sure, like it doesn't feel like a real amp. It feels like computer speakers. Joe Bonamassa, what does Joe Bonamassa sound like? and I tease at Joe Bonamassa, but let's be honest, he plays a heck of a lot better than me. I don't even know what I would play to emulate the way he plays. Does that sound like a tone that he would use? I honestly have no idea. <laughs> ACDC Crunch. I have a feeling these are all user patches that have been saved to the cloud. Yeah, because there's another ACDC. Bright Tweed. Maybe I should grab the Telecaster for this one again. Come as you are, Nirvana. All right. I'm expecting some Univibe action here. Sounds decent. Crazy Train. Back to Humbuckers. It sounded a lot better to my ear once I took out some low end. Jazzy. Sure. Heavy orange. Is this going to doom? ZZ Top. Whoa! Whoever made this likes to live dangerously. <laughs> There's no noise gate on it, and it's feeding back really, really quick. Motley Crue 80s tone. That sounds fun. Got 
That's some serious hair metal modulation going on there. Ambient moon. hair metal shred. I'll call it quits on this one. We'll see what it's all about. That's a lot of modulation on top of a lot of dirt. We've got a gate, a compressor, a tube screamer, a switch axe amp. I'm not sure what that's trying to be. Um, some sort of modulation, a digital course, because of course, of course, <laughs> a digital delay and the chamber reverb. Let's start from here. We'll take some stuff out. Yeah, um, I want to mess around with that, like, the smart jam is what it's called, the smart jam thing. All right, create. We've got Dave, Sharon, and Charles. Dave loves rock and pop, plays loud and proud. Sharon, an excellent pocket player with funky grooves. Charles with a true authentic groove for the blues. Let's go with Sharon. Let's jam Sharon. Uh, I've got to tap in my own tempo. We're off to a rough start. What's it gonna come up with? I'm a little surprised uh, it's playing through the iPad speakers instead of playing through the amp. I don't know if there's a way to uh, get it to do that automatically, to play through the amp. Maybe the Bluetooth only goes one way, huh? I'm gonna try running a headphone cable from the iPad into the auxiliary end of the amp. have done a really lousy job <laughs> uh, playing to that click in a way that it could figure out what the hell I was trying to do, what I was trying to tell it to do. Um, I'm not getting an immediate result that is easy for me to jam to. Let's try one more time. Let's bring up the speed up to 130. I'll go really simple with it now. from <laughs> or the A sharp. <laughs> That's a little bit hilarious. What is 
this. Oh, it wants to make a it wants me to make a video with that. Um There's videos here I can select from. Only backing tracks. That was really loud. I know there's a way to like search through YouTube and Spotify and Apple Music and stuff like that. Um, these are all provided videos from them. Melodic heavy rock guitar. There's some potential there to do some good good learning <laughs> playing along with videos and tracks and stuff like that I'll have to spend some time figuring out how to connect it to YouTube and whatnot there's a search bar here let's see is this just going into YouTube Junior Brown surf medley I'm not sure where it's getting these videos from. If it's connecting to YouTube or these are videos already in the positive grid system. That is interesting though. I don't know. What do you guys think? These are $269 new. You get a bunch of different amps and pedals to select from. But there's certainly all kinds of other things on the market that give you those options. It's loud. This box here gets loud. That's for sure. Um, across the board, it seems like the low end is dialed in way too high. Every single patch, for the most part, I had to dump the low end across the base knob. It's missing things that are important to me. Most importantly, spring reverb. I'm still a little bit surprised that you're really limited to room, hall, and plate reverbs. Like, that's all there is. There's some fun delays in here. Digital echoes, vintage delay, reverse delay. We can try that. Multi-head, echo tape. Let's try that reverse. Multi-head.
Can you change the order? You can't change the order. Like I'd want phaser in front of the amp. <laughs> Now that I've spent some time with it, I'm gonna try again to dial in like a clean surfy sort of sound. And then kind of process my closing thoughts. All right, I've dialed in something kind of resembling a surfy sound. I've got the uh, black face duo here. I've got an echo tape for a little bit of slap back. Kind of representing, you know, something re resembling a drip. It's not a drip, but trying to get there. And then the hall natural reverb. A practice tool for jamming around the house on the couch. I, I could live with that. I could live with that, you know, to jam along to a video if I'm learning something. I've got a, a, a trim here too. Normally, I record my final thoughts section uh, in the same session as playing around with and experiencing the products that I cover, but I'm doing it a little bit different this time. I did record a final thoughts yesterday, and then today I went and edited through all the footage, and it really confirmed what I was hearing here in room. The Spark has a major EQ issue. The low end is over the top. It is just so present. Um, even with the bass knob rolled all the way back, there was a few times I did that in the video and there was still just an overwhelming amount of low end from this amp. And I think that's part of the reason why um, a lot of people feel impressed with this amp in person is because it really fills the room out and it feels like a very physical, kind of interaction because there is so much low end vibrating the room. <laughs> but honestly, it made it really difficult to edit the audio for this video because there's so much low end that everything in the mid to high range 
couldn't be turned up loud enough to get through the mix. Like I think if you go back and listen, you'll hear there's a lot of parts where the guitar sounds really quiet. And it's because I couldn't bring up those highs and mids above the lows. I could have done all kinds of recording tricks, all kinds of tricks in post to pull back a lot of those lows, to bring the volume up. But I'm personally always committed to trying to represent what I heard in room with my demos. Like I want you to hear what I heard to the best of my ability to present that. And I, I believe that I have done that. This puts me in an awkward position. I said earlier in the video that um, I wanted to check this out before accepting a sponsorship for the podcast. The way I'm feeling about the Spark, I'm not going to run a sponsorship for the Spark, which is me not only, you know, taking money potentially out of my bank account, but also out of Steve's bank account. So sorry, Steve, but I honestly don't feel like I can endorse this product at this point. And full transparency, I charge money for my unboxing videos. So <laughs> if, if Positive Grid uh, honors my invoice, they will be paying for this video. I think as a physical object itself, the build of the Spark is really impressive for 269 bucks. It feels like an amp head. It's very substantial, but there's something going on with the way the EQ is handled that it makes it very difficult for me to like this. I think that the patches and the software uh, sounded like they have promise to them. I liked the game character of a lot of the patches, a lot of the amps and stuff like that. It sounded like, oh man, there's a really fun game character here, but it's all being filtered and funneled through this super low focused kind of filtering with that EQ. And it just was so murky. That's what I was experiencing in room. That's what I was experiencing when I was mixing it in post. It's just so murky most of the time. It kind of reminds me of the experience I had with the Fender Mustang GT40, where that was a full fail for me. I think this is better than that amp. The GT40 failed for me because the two speakers actually sounded out of phase with that amp, which made it sound really, really awful in person. It actually sounded better in recordings than it did in person because I only had one mic on one speaker. If they had mic'd both speakers, you would have been able to hear that the speakers were out of phase. Where this doesn't have that, it doesn't have a phase issue, but that the, the EQ issue is significant. Like I said, I think the patches are probably great. The functionality, the app seemed fine. Really the, the unique selling proposition here is um, that live jamming stuff and its ability to transpose songs off of YouTube and Spotify and iTunes and whatnot to show you the chords but the rest of it, the fact that it's it's coming through this very over-the-top EQ kind of signature kind of voids the amp in general, in my personal opinion anyways. Yesterday on the 60 Cycle Hum Facebook group, I made a post asking people who own a Spark or have owned a Spark to give me their positive or negative reviews. And I mentioned that I might be reading them in this video. So I thought I would go through some of them so you guys can hear opinions from people who own them. Actual consumers, not influencers like me, consumers. Andrew Higgs says, okay, the tones are really, really great on the AC amp as well as the two rock. It's a fun tool for bedroom and beginners. A great bridge for the player that isn't quite at a Helix or HX Stomp level, but wants to dive into effects. That being said, I sold mine in favor for the HX Stomp for my bedroom slash home rig. It gets pretty loud. I agree. This thing has a lot of volume to it, but my experience was most of that volume is dedicated to the low end. The mids and the highs aren't getting even nearly as loud as the low end. He continues on. It does not drip. <laughs> but it does fuzz well. The Univibe is pretty nice. I did have fun with that Univibe. I need a Univibe in my life. I need a Univibe pedal. Uh, I thought the fuzz was fine. 
once I found amps that hosted, you know, each fuzz nicely. Tim Wyatt says, stereo spread is pretty cool. I didn't experience any stereo spread. Maybe if I plugged in headphones, I would hear stereo effects, but I think the speakers were just too close together for me to hear any stereo effects happening. Stereo spread is pretty cool. Great for practice. I found myself trying genres of music I hadn't tried before and therefore expanding my abilities. I think that's, you know, honestly, one of the key points with a product like this is being able to connect to your smartphone or your tablet and stream music and the function to be able to see uh, what chords are being played in songs and stuff like that. It's, it's a big deal. And being able to play along to songs uh, with the least amount of gear possible makes practicing, uh, casual practice around the house, a lot more fun, a lot more easy. So that functionality is really smart. And I'm a big fan of other products that do something similar. Jeff, Jeffrey T. Hatcher says, I've had mine for about nine months or so. It's a pretty decent modeling amplifier and works surprisingly well for acoustic and bass as well as electric guitar. It's pretty easy to dial in tones using the app, setting up four presets that allow you to have easy one button access. Some may find that limiting, but for a practice amp to keep by my desk, it's not a big deal. I find the integration with YouTube jam tracks to be one of the coolest and most useful features. Not a big fan of the smart jam function, which is hit or miss, but mostly miss. <laughs> Well said. Christian Snow says, my friend said he loved his, then listed it for sale a week later. A week later? I feel like you should just be able to return it, right? Depending on where you bought it from. Peter Wall says, a lot of low end. Ton of reverb, fun to practice with, and maybe play with a friend, but I would not gig with it. Backing tracks and creative backing track are fun though. You definitely need to download the app to get the most out of it. I agree. Um, the sounds I was getting right out of the box off the face of the amp um, were really hit and miss. Uh, it opened up a lot of options getting into the app. So I'd say if you get one of these, get the app running as soon as possible. Don't be immediately discouraged by the sounds that you're hearing from the selector switch here, um, but don't be too hopeful either. Terry Rand says, I have one and it's my go-to practice and direct recording amp. It sounds great, infinite tone possibilities and the price is modest. It is one of my most treasured pieces of gear. It is as advertised. It is a great acoustic and bass amp as well. I'm going to agree that it is as advertised. I went through the positive grid literature online and they didn't say anything I disagreed with. Um, I think where maybe my frustration and the frustration of others might come from is the fact that there's so much third party literature, so much third party media and advertising around these that presents it so enthusiastically that this major issue that I'm having with it uh, almost seems minimalized. I've, I have heard and seen other channels say that it has a ton of low end. But if I had been experiencing this kind of low end issue while watching those videos, um, I probably wouldn't have agreed to have this sent to me in the first place. Todd Evans says, all I know is it fits well on that little shelf on my couch, iPad at the ready, headphones when I don't wanna disturb the wife more than I usually do, in parentheses, and it sounds pretty killer sitting about two feet away from it. I, like I said, I think the patches sound like they have a lot of promise. There's a lot of potential there. I've used the uh, the Positive Grid app on my phone to play through and I didn't walk away thinking that it sounded overly bass heavy and things like that. I think the patches are fine. I think the software is fine. There's something that uh, is affecting the EQ of this that is the problem. But if like, like I said, if you're in room with it, that big low end feel can translate to it feeling very big and very present and it can it could impress you when you're in room with it. It's a difficult thing to conceptualize. Donald Straton says, hell of a lot of low end, hell of a lot of features, hell of a lot of fun. It's a practice amp for trying new sounds and learning new songs. What it's not is a replacement to a gig amp or an amp for connoisseurs. 
Julie Baldwin says, I like it. The amp sounds great with all my guitars and it's easy to set up and use. It also makes a great Bluetooth speaker. You might like it. Not sure if it drips though. Haven't checked that out. Albert Lene Mills the fourth says, I own one and I like it quite a bit. It's very deep, but I mainly play a Reverend with one of those low end roll off controls. So I don't notice it really at all since I roll off the excess. Makes a nice easy interface and Bluetooth speaker too. Greg Hartman says, I don't use it much because you really need your phone and app to get the most out of it. It needs a foot switch that looks like some companies are working on, have to switch everything with the phone or buttons right now. I prefer a regular amp and pedals. The YouTube jam tracks are fun though. The Michael Contreras says, man, I love mine. I've had it since last fall and it's been super reliable and the interface with my phone helps me be really in control of the exact detail of my presets. Unlike some of the other modular amps I've had. I also like that I don't have to run an aux cable to my phone to play music through it and jam along with a song or two. That's interesting. So there is a way to connect it to your phone so you don't have to run a cable like I had to do. I just couldn't find the setting to turn that on. It's probably a setting within the iPad. I was looking within the app for the amp. It's got to be something on the, um, on the system settings on the iPad to make that possible. I'll have to look into that. If I had been sent a product with these kinds of issues from a small builder or from a company that hadn't launched this product yet, I wouldn't publish the video. I would send it back to them with a list of issues that I would want addressed before being able to promote it. I've done that in the past. I'll do it again in the future. But the fact that this has been out for quite a while and it's been promoted so heavily makes me feel like I have a bit of a duty, a bit of a moral imperative to publish this video so that people can hear what my experience with it is. I, I don't like this. This is very uncomfortable for me. I don't like having to do this, but I feel like it's the right thing to do. I have no desire to be a channel that gathers views and clicks um, by dragging products through the mud, especially when they don't deserve it. But I am in the business of trying my very best within the best of my ability to accurately present products as I experience them to my audience so that they can make accurate shopping decisions. And that's, that's just where I am with this. Across all those positive reviews from the Facebook community and factoring in, you know, all the positive reviews and positive media out there um, around the spark, there might be a very subjective thing going on here. Subjectively, I might not like this and that's fine. If you love your spark, that's fantastic. Try to sell other people on it down in the comment section. Uh, fight it out, guys. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. You know I'm always fine with that. Um, but I can say with full confidence that I, I didn't have a good time playing with it. And I think that's really the biggest issue. Playing music should be fun. Your gear should be fun for you. It shouldn't be a challenge. It shouldn't be upsetting. And uh, this felt very challenging to me. I didn't experience any joy playing with this at any point yesterday. Going back and editing it confirmed that. So yeah, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, just like, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon, buy a shirt if you're naked. And uh, you know what, I'm sorry, positive grid. <laughs> I am, I don't like to do this sort of thing, but like I said earlier, I feel like there's a moral imperative at work here from my personal position. So everyone out there, stay grounded. Bye, everybody.